Hey everyone, Luke Cook from SSW TV, and today I am here with Matt Goldman, one of our .NET MAUI and mobile development experts, and he is here to tell me and to tell you what .NET MAUI is, why you should care about it, what problems it solves, and how you can get started. So, thanks for coming. You're welcome, Luke. Why don't we start with the obvious question, <coughs> what is .NET MAUI? Luke, actually, I've come here today to ask you a question. Yeah? Have you heard the good news about our Lord and Savior, .NET MAUI? No, I haven't. Okay. I haven't. Was that the knock on the door that I ignored this morning? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, was that you? <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Damn, and I'm still here to talk about it. <laughs> All right, so what is it? What is it? So, so uh, .NET MAUI is the new uh, UI app development framework from Microsoft, okay? Um, and it just so happens to be cross-platform. Okay. So, so MAUI, it stands for multi-platform app UI. It's not just this cute character here that right. we have absolute permission to use in this video from Disney. <laughs> I'm sure we do. Yes. yes. Very clever. Very clever. Okay. Mm. So they have made a cute little name for a new UI platform. That's right. Yeah. And this is a cross cross platform platform. Yeah. So it's it's kind of if you look at the evolution of uh, of of Microsoft's UI frameworks in .NET. We used to have WinForms, which was Windows only, and then we got WPF. Um, the roots of MAUI are kind of in WPF in, in terms of XAML, uh, uh, which is the, the domain-specific language that you use for writing UIs in MAUI. Um, we're going to talk about that in our next video a bit more. OK. Um, uh, and then you know, after, after WPF, we, had, we actually had Silverlight as well, which was a uh, Yes, uh, I was, remember those days. Yeah. yeah. So S Silverlight was a WPF renderer for, for the web browser, so mm. that also used XAML. And after that, we had UWP, uh, which was the universal Windows platform. Universal because uh, it worked on everything, not just Windows, as long as everything was you know, Xbox, uh, <laughs> Microsoft Surface, yeah. Windows RT, or Windows. Yeah, right. Um, or okay. Windows Phone, actually. We had Windows Phone back in the day, pour one out. Um, so you're telling me MAUI is the new uh, Xbox platform as well? So you, well, yeah. So you can write um, you can write MAUI apps that will run on Xbox. Yeah. You can write MAUI apps that will run on uh, Android, iOS devices, Windows, and Mac. You can write um, and uh, MAUI apps that will run on Wear OS. So you know your uh, smart watch OS, Tizen for TVs. Okay. So is this um, essentially Xamarin 2.0 then? Uh, in a way, yes. In another way, it's more like Xamarin Six. <laughs> but okay. Was that, so, so, I'll, um, in fact, uh, you know, that that leads into um, something that I'll, I'll just skip ahead actually, and I'll just talk you through this little diagram I have here that tells us a bit about the architecture of, of how Maui works. Yep. Okay. So, <clears throat> we used to have uh, Xamarin, uh, and in fact, before we had Xamarin, um, if you wanted to build a, a mobile app for iOS or for Android, you would have to write it in um, back in those days, Objective C. Yeah, I iOS. tried once and then gave up. Yeah, yep. um, or Java for Android. Of course, now you, you can still use Objective C, um, but you have like Swift as well now, which is the the, the language that Apple have developed. And for um, for Android, you have Kotlin now, which is a kind of Java compatible language. Um, it's just not Java because Oracle owned Java now, and they weren't happy about it. No, uh, <laughs> I've heard this story somewhere before as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so. Uh, but those are, those are specifically the languages, right? But then Xamarin came along. And Xamarin, in fact, before Xamarin, you had Mono. And uh, Mono was originally an open source uh, .NET runtime. Um, so, so .NET, you know, was a, when it was created, was a collection of languages. Um, but it was also a runtime. And it was specifically intended to be a runtime that was independent of the operating system, mm -hmm. um, uh, like Java is. So, so uh, there was uh, an open source uh, .NET runtime called Mono that was created to run on Linux. And that evolved into something called Mono Touch, which was basically the Mono runtime for iOS, and Mono Droid, which was the Mono runtime for Android. They then evolved into a, a product called Xamarin, uh, and there was Xamarin.iOS and Xamarin.Android, yep. and they were .NET runtimes for iOS and Android. But then on top of that, they became uh, an abstraction of the entire platform's APIs. Um, but in .NET. So everything that you would have access to on an Android device using Kotlin or Java, all of those Android-specific APIs on iOS, all the iOS-specific APIs, but in .NET. It's a one-to-one -one namespace mapping. So they have 100% coverage of the native APIs? 100% coverage of the native APIs, yeah. Right, okay. 
But they had this in Xamarin days, right? Had this in Xamarin days. Yeah. And it, but the next thing to come after Xamarin was, was Xamarin Forms. And Xamarin Forms was uh, a UI layer on top of that. So you could write now, what, so it used to be that you would write, you know, um, your iOS app and your Android app with one shared kind of business logic code base, but then you'd write the UIs for each platform. Mm -hmm. Then you had Xamarin Forms. Xamarin Forms let you write the UI and share it as well. And this has now evolved into .NET MAUI. And if you look at this diagram here, um, where these bits fit in here that we were just talking about is that what I just described was bottom up. It started very much from the bottom. You started with the platform. With .NET MAUI, the way that it's built and engineered is the same thing, but the paradigm is top down. So you start at the top here with your app code. So you write your code. You write a .NET MAUI app. You don't write an Android app or a Windows app or an mm -hmm. iOS app. You write a .NET MAUI app. And a .NET MAUI app is a shared set of APIs that has uh, runtimes that run on all of those platforms. As you go down through the stack, you see a bit more about how that works. So what used to be Xamarin Android is now .NET for Android. So .NET for Android isn't the runtime. It's, it's the APIs. It's the Android APIs. Mm -hmm. Same with iOS, Windows, uh, Mac. Um, and then, of course, underneath that, you've got the .NET base class library, because everything in, in .NET has that. And then underneath that, you have the different runtimes that run these on those different platforms. And then at the very bottom layer, you've got the actual operating system and, and the platform APIs. OK, so <laughs> I write my UI in, did you say XAML, right? Yep. And I write my app using the .NET MAUI API, yep. which then just goes and figures out whatever it needs to figure out, depending on what device it's running on. So I just call, say, like camera in the .NET MAUI API, and yep. it handles the rest from there. Pretty much, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good example, yeah. So, OK. Yeah. And it works the same on all platforms? Uh, so where, uh, all the platforms that share the same APIs, that you have the same APIs abstracted in MAUI, uh, work the same way. Mm. The UI works a little differently on each platform. Um, so the way that, that, that .NET MAUI works is, it's, it, again, it's an abstraction of those native platform experiences. So if you want to write a, uh, a .NET MAUI app, you can run it on Windows, but it will look like a Windows app on Windows. You can run it on Android, and it will look like an, an Android app. I guess um, what I'm uh, really trying to ask is, do you, do you run into the, you know, cross -plat the, the classic uh, cross-platform problem where it's you know, build once, debug everywhere? Or is it fairly solid across all of the different platforms that it can be installed upon? It's fairly solid across all the, the different platforms. Um, the, the, the sort of underlying APIs, like the platform features, things like the camera that you just mentioned, things like preferences that we can probably play with a, a bit later on, because that's a nice, easy one. Um, all, all those kind of things, they work pretty much uniformly across all the platforms. You, you know, as, a, as a .NET you know, developer, those, those shared APIs, you wouldn't really know the difference in terms of what you're writing and which platform it's running on. The UI um, can uh, is well with .NET MAUI. It's it's kind of very solid and a very consistent experience across all of them. Mm. Um, probably more so than with Xamarin Forms. Of course, there are some there are just some things that just work differently on different platforms. Um, I wouldn't say you have to debug them differently, but you might have to tweak your UI to behave a certain way on one platform. You know, and it might not work the same way on a different one. Right, but. You're allowed to do that, right? You can you can dig deeper than this sort of .NET MAUI API layer that we're looking at here, and Absolutely. you can start hitting the individual platform APIs directly if you want to. You sure can, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and there's different levels of that as well, right? So you can start at the very the very simple, right? So let's say you're building a UI. Yep. And you might say, I really like how this looks on iOS, but it looks it doesn't look so good on Android. So I want to change the padding, but I only want that padding to be different on Android. You know, on, on Windows and iOS and, and, and Mac OS, I want it to be the same. You can do that. Then you can take it a level down where you can say, uh, actually, I don't want to use. In fact, uh, let me give you a, a bit more of an explanation about how it works. Uh, so from a UI perspective, .NET MAUI is, is a, a bunch of what they call handlers, right? Mm -hmm. And it used to be called renderers in Xamarin Forms, which might be a, 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 an easier way for, for people that aren't in the know to understand it. But es essentially what it is is, is the, the .NET MAUI API has, say, a button. And uh, .NET MAUI has a handler for Windows that makes a button look like a Windows button. Yep. It has a handler for iOS and a handler for macOS and a handler for Android. Right? 
So you can just drop a button into your Maui app and you've got a button on any one of those platforms. So you, you know, the, the next step from, from what we said a moment ago with the, you know, adjusting the padding or adjusting a, a, a particular um, variable per platform is you can say, I don't want to use that handler. Um, I want to use the default handler on all these platforms, but I want to write my own handler for this platform, or I want to write my own handler for each platform. And you know, you can you can override the default one and, and change the way that something behaves. Um, I'll give you a really good example, right? So you know, um, let's say you want to have a, an, a, a box to put for, to put your name in, right? Yep. Text box. Text box. Yep. Yep. It's called an entry in .NET Maui, okay. um, or, or like an input in HTML. Um, that's rendered differently on each platform. So on Mac OS and iOS, it's got like a very faint outline on it. On Windows, it's got a kind of thick styled outline at the bottom. And on Android, uh, it's got a thin line at the bottom and nothing else. Uh, that's the material style, right? Mm -hmm. You might want to do your own entry that has your own border and you know has an icon in it and that kind of stuff. So um, you know you you can do all that, and you know you you. But on iOS, you want to get rid of the border because you want your own. On Android, you want to get rid of the underline because you, you don't want that. You're going to put your own border on it. Yep. So you can you can dive down into the handlers and override those properties, or you know write your own handler. So you can write a single handler then for an input and have that applied to every device as well. No. So no. You have to the handlers write... the handlers are platform specific. Okay. So if you wanted to override the default input. Uh, render for every platform, you would have to go and write a specific overriding handler per platform that implemented that same on, on every, style. On every, on every platform that you wanted to change it on, you would have to do that. Yeah, assuming um, that you, you say wanted a, uni a uniform look across yeah. all devices, yeah. and that was a custom UI look, right? Not out of the box. Yeah. You would then have to go and write a handler for each yes. platform, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty easy to do. Um, but it, you know, it also depends on, on how much customization you want, because you know, we're talking about a case here that you may not need. You, your, your universal look that you may want across all of them, you might be able to achieve just in your XAML code, right? So you yep. may not need to write a handler. But if you, if you want to and you need to, you can. Um, and they're, they're really easy to do as well, compared to what we had previously with, with custom renderers. The handlers are very easy to access. They've got a nice fluent API you can use. So you know, if, you, if, you, you know, if you've got the documentation open for, say, the Android uh, UI API, that's really useful. And you, you, know, you can use your IntelliSense and the fluent API to just kind of figure it out as you go as well, which is quite nice. That's a pretty in-depth explanation as to what Maui is and where it came from. You've, you've pretty much answered why I would care about it as well, but let me just sort of reiterate it to make sure I understand properly. Uh, I would care about this if I had to write a native app that would be able to be run on iOS, Android, Windows, all of these platforms, but I wanted to be able to do it top down, inside out in .NET code, right? Yeah. I don't have to go and learn Objective-C, I don't have to go and learn Swift, I don't have to go and learn anything else, I can do the whole thing in my nice .NET bubble. Absolutely, yeah. Right. That's okay. exactly what it's for. Yeah. And uh, you know, as a .NET developer, um, you would find you know, Maui very easy to, to write. And you know, Maui isn't a different skill set. It's not a different technology. It, it's, it's part of it's .NET. It's all .NET, right? Yeah. Yeah, OK. So if you, 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 know, you can write an ASP.NET Core app. You can write a .NET Maui app. Right. Yeah. All right, well, I want you to prove it. I want you to show me how we get started then. OK. I think we might do that in the next video. Sounds good, yeah. All right. Fantastic. This has been Luke Cook and Matt Goldman with SSW TV. Stick around for the next video where I'm going to ask Matt to uh, put his money where his mouth is and show us how to get started with a .NET Maui app. Thank you.